everybody welcome back to cottonwood hill farms so it's about nine o'clock i think i got finished up with chores milking everything's clean everything's ready to go i uh we're gonna be raking and baling hay today we're doing uh, all square bales on this round so what i got going on i got to run down to uh just run up the road to the dealer the new holland dealer they're just a few miles up the road but i got to get a uh, bale counter nothing like waiting until the last minute right i got to get a little bale counter for our square baler it's been broke for over a year, so I figured I would wait until the day I need it to go get it. That kind of makes sense. But I need, I want to get that on because uh, last year I didn't I didn't have it. It broke, but it wasn't a big deal. We didn't, didn't have a ton of squares, but I just counted them as they went in the barn. But this year we're going to be doing quite a bit more squares, so I want to make sure I've got it on the baler so I can keep track of what, I'm, what I've got and what we're, what we're making. So I'm going to run over and do that real quick. That won't take me more than 15, 20 minutes. And then as soon as I get back, i got to throw some teeth on the rake. Uh, I think it's missing about six teeth, which that's not a big deal. It'll take me probably 10 minutes to do that. And then uh, we're going to head down and start raking. Should be, uh, it's a nice, it's a beautiful morning out. There's not a cloud, well, not many clouds in the sky. And uh, it's, uh, I think it'll be a really good day to make some hay. It's supposed to be kind of warm, but it's not going to be too humid. So I think it'll be okay. And I've got some help coming later this afternoon to get, help me get this stacked in the barn. So anyway, we're going to get going. new paint. Fifty-eight dollars. Woo! Hopefully it'll last more than one season, which is what this plastic piece of junk did. See you again. Got to get the rake turned on. That releases a pin inside the uh, gearbox over here and it turns it on. I figured real quick I'd show you the hitch I use. I don't put this on the draw bar. Uh, I don't like that. You can't. I like this because I control the height better. I used to use just one of those flat draw bars that went on the two point, but then I made this. This is really nice. It's handy for moving trailers and stuff around, but it works great for raking hay because it pushes the rake back far enough that I can turn a lot tighter and the rake doesn't get caught up in the wheels. And uh, I can also raise it up and it does help. It gets it a little bit higher if I want to skip. It'll, it'll still grab a windrow, but not, not near as much as if I wasn't able to raise it. So that works out real well. I really, I really like, like this, uh, I really like this setup. This right here is a perfect example of why I need to get a bigger rake. Because right now there's not much leaf shatter. It's actually, this is perfect timing. I thought maybe I should have been out here a little bit earlier and I probably could have maybe an hour maybe two hours, but uh, it's, it's looking really good, nice and green, not much leaf shatter at all, but it takes so long to rake with this thing. If I had a V-rake or even a, uh, a uh, rotary rake, a bigger rotary rake, I could, uh, I could get this done a lot faster because what's gonna happen is 
this is going to take me probably two hours or so and by the time i get to those last oh the last 30 minutes or so i guarantee i'm going to start having more leaf shatter because it's going to dry down quicker so i'm hoping uh we'll see kind of how things go this winter this the rest of this year and this winter but i'm hoping by next spring to have a to have a bigger rake my goal is to have a nice wheel rake and then also a nice rotary rake as well this uh i know there's some guys out there that really like these uh There was a competition to see how many leaves you could knock off your alfalfa i'd win every single time i don't know if you guys can see it in the video or not but uh the stuff is pretty good i don't know if the camera will pick it up or not but uh there's still a lot of leaves i'm getting some leaf shatter same thing that happened to me that first round where the top is drying faster than the bottom and that's what i'm having right now is these top leaves they're shattering but the bottom when i flip it over these are hanging on so this is going to be good hay it's going to be good make good square bales and it's not stemmy at all this should be really really good squares but uh i don't know i was hoping i was really hoping for 400 450 bales but uh something tells me we're going to be around the 300 mark done raking we're gonna go uh i gotta put that bale counter on the baler and then uh i think that's it we're gonna hook up and get started gotta throw a little dry hay in for the cows before i get started and make sure they got plenty of feed So I got the square baler hooked up. I'm gonna use the Massey. I was gonna use the John Deere, change the mine. I'm gonna use the Massey on this. Uh, so I had to unhook the mower quick, no big deal. But uh, anyway, we got it ready to go. I got the bale counter on. We're gonna head out and see how fast it uh, takes us to break something. All right, 
I got this thing all set up. Every time I'm done using this, I always take all the hay out of it. I don't like leaving hay sitting in it. And uh, so that means every time I get started again or go to use it again, I have to, uh, I have to adjust the bale size a little bit because those first couple bales that come out, the way this works is you have a bale that's already been made in the chute and then the next bale, as the plunger comes up, it pushes on it and it uses the existing bale that's already been made to compact the next bale. And so right now, as you can see, there's no hay in it. So that means the first bale, the first couple bales that comes out are gonna be really loose. So what I usually do is I'll go make a couple bales, grab those bales, bring them back up and run them through the machine again. That way, uh, that way I've got good tight bales. And then also that gives me time to adjust my bale size and my tightness and all that kind of stuff. In South Australia, I was born. Australia round Cape Horn. We're bound for South Australia. Paul away, you rolling king. Heave away, haul away. Paul away, you'll hear me sing. We're bound for South Australia. Miss Nancy Blair, we're bound for South Australia. There's just one thing that's on my mind. Heave away, haul away, that's leaving Nancy Blair behind. We're bound for South Australia. And as we wallop around Cape Horn, heave away, haul away. You wish to God you've never been born. We're bound for South Australia. Haul away, you rolling king. Heave away, haul away, haul away. You hear me sing. We're bound for South Australia. Australia round Cape Horn In South Australia I was born We're bound for South Australia Call away you rolling king Heave away, haul away Call away you hear me sing We're bound for South Australia Call away you rolling king Heave away, haul away Call away you hear me sing We're bound for South Australia Well, this ain't the best hay I've ever made in my life, but it's also not the worst, so that's a good thing. I think uh, I think shortening up these bales a little bit was really helping too. The baler's running pretty good, but uh, you can see it's a little bit stemmy. It's not too bad. It's still green, but uh, the leaf shatter is just... I, I'm just so frustrated. The leaf shatter is horrible, but it's just... The, it's this, this weather, this weather, the drying is so inconsistent, and... Uh, I don't know, I mean, I almost think that I should have had the baler following the rake, but uh, I, I don't know, two hands can only do so much work, I guess, right? Shear to pin. Never fails, I always do that at least one time. So I got a buddy of mine running some tools down to me real quick. This thing got out of time, and I figure I'll give a quick little while I'm waiting for him just a quick little uh, description of what's going on here so this has a uh, it's a shear pin right behind the flywheel here right there and uh, I must have got into a uh, I must have got into a ball of wet stuff anyway it sheared that pin well it came it, it, it knocked it out of time and what I mean by knocking it out of time is when this uh, for you guys that don't know I'm sure a lot of you do know but uh, this thing when these knotters come up that you guys saw uh, you saw in that last uh, one of those last clips everything has to be timed otherwise when that plunger comes back if those if those needles are up 
if, if the needles are up tying and that plunger were to come back, it'll snap your needles. And those needles are, a, a, I think, well, as of five years ago, they were $850. Ask me how I know that. Anyway, so it got out of time. So what you do, I've got my pin back in it and got it tight. And then I don't know if you can see this, but there's two right there and right there, there's two little notches. And so you put this top dead center, which is right between these two little notches here. And then you come back here and on your, right here, there's another notch and right there's a notch. Those two have to line up next to each other. They need to be right across from each other. So what I got to do is I got to loosen this and loosen this, pull this chain off. And then I need to adjust this down just a hair, just so these are in line with each other because this has a safety on it. And this right here, this lever right here, let's see if it's sticking out. I don't know if I can, uh, it's not. But anyway, this lever right here has got a, uh, this piece in here, it's got a piece of metal that will slide out and it'll stop when that arm comes down, it'll stop that arm and snap that ring. So it won't snap your needles. It does that on purpose. The whole point of that is to save your needles. If that makes sense, I hope I'm explaining that well. But as that arm, as that arm rotates and comes down, if it's not in time and the needles are up, that little piece of metal slides out and it'll catch the arm. That way that arm snaps the pin and it doesn't snap your needles because that, that pin or that bolt is like $3 or $2 versus $900, probably over a thousand now. So this piece right here, as you can see, it's connected all the way back to here. And this is this right here, this lever, that's where the needles are. These are these are the, your needles right here. They slide up, they've got the twine in them, and that's what pushes the twine up between the bales. It, and uh, this piece right here, when the needles are all the way back, you can see they push this lever back. And when it pulls this lever back, then it slides that back out that way the, uh, the arm when it comes down doesn't hit it. I was close that's less than I thought that's it's better than nothing I guess huh those guys are starting to pick up out there all right everything went smooth I got to be honest that was the uh, I didn't break one bale not one bale that baler ran flawlessly except for that uh, shear pin uh, other than that 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 uh, I'm a little scared to do anything else today because that went so well we only got 284 bales. Hey, that's better than nothing. It's actually really good hay. Quite a few leaves, even though we had a lot of leaf shatter. A lot of leaf shatter. It's still, there's still a lot of leaves. Nice and green. It should be good hay. So I'm pretty excited. These guys are down here picking up now. I'm going to go help just a little bit, and then I'm going to have to break off and go go milk and do some chores and stuff. But uh, anyway, let's run down and check what, check out what they're doing. All right, so those guys are gonna take that load in. That's the second load. They're gonna go and load that. While they're doing that, I'm gonna bring the cows up. I gotta get ready to start milking. Let's go. Well, I mean, since I'm here, might as well grab a few, huh? Be silly not to. That's a good looking stack of hay there. 
There's two things I always like seeing. I always like seeing an empty barn at the end of winter or beginning of spring, I guess I should say. And then <clears throat> at the end of summer, right before winter, I always like seeing a full barn. It's just the change in the seasons, the change in the year. I don't know. It's always kind of a neat thing. It's I, I know there's a lot of guys that say the same thing about uh, cornfields and, and wheat fields and whatnot. It's always nice to see an empty field, but then in the spring, it's always nice to see a, a field with lush green little uh, small plants growing too. So anyway, it's just a just a good feeling, really good feeling. To start having that. So there's there's about two hundred and there's about two hundred and seventy ish, two hundred and seventy two bales in here, and uh, we've got. <clears throat> Oh, another seven acres I'll probably cut next week. And then uh, third crop, and then we should get a fourth crop, hopefully. Uh, we'll see how much rain we get. Well, we're supposed to get rain tonight and tomorrow, which is good timing. But anyway, everything the rest of the year we're going to do, we're going to do all in squares and try and put up as many as we can. So we'll see how it goes. I ran down to the field quick. I don't know how it did it, but the baler made these real tiny little bales. No idea how it was tripping like that but uh anyway there's about nine of them here they'll uh it'll be good hay for those uh those heifers that i'm kind of training right now <clears throat> that's a good size good size for a feeding for them but uh anyway it's a good feeling to get all this done i used to have to do this stuff by myself but it's nice having some young young guys that want to help and actually want to work the work work ethic in this country has really went downhill so it's i appreciate seeing young young men that want to actually get out and get sweaty, get dirty and, and work, work hard. It's a, it's a good thing to see that kind of stuff. But, uh, anyway, guys, like always, we appreciate all the support. We, if you're still watching, we, we really appreciate that. And, uh, don't forget to like, and subscribe, hit that notification button. So you don't hit, any, hit uh, miss any of the new, uh, new videos coming out. And, uh, you can also follow us on Instagram and, and Facebook. We try and stay fairly active on there, but, uh, you guys stay safe over the 4th of July. Enjoy yourselves, but don't forget what it's about. This uh, Our country's kind of in a rough spot right now, and uh, I think one of the most important things we can do is kind of think back on, <clears throat> on how we got here, where we came from, and where we're headed. Because uh, I don't like to get too political on here. That's not what this is about, but I think it's very important to think about our future and where we're headed and uh, how we can be involved and what we can do to kind of help out. Help out and... Uh, move things in the right direction and uh, kind of get back to our roots and get back to things that are actually important and the values that uh, this country was founded on. So uh, I hope you guys really enjoy your holiday. Stay safe and God bless. I love you all out there. We're all brothers and sisters here on this earth. You guys take care of yourselves and we'll see you in the next one.